Eli Stance, the Gwinnett Rambler, um, up here on Hog Mountain. Thought I'd give you an update on something I got in the mail yesterday, and you can make your opinion on it, but you need to be able to know how to comment on it and make your choices. So, in the mail received the postcard from Georgia DOT and Gwinnett County Department of Transportation collecting feedback for the Sugarloaf Parkway Extension Phase 2. Now, if you look on there, it gives you some time frame. The period for public comments already open. It's all going to be done virtual. It closes June 16th. So let me show you how to go review the project and get your comments uh, submitted before June 16th. On this postcard, and I'll put the link in the video notes down below as well, you'll see that it takes you to the GDOT Public Outreach webpage. And on that webpage, you'll see all the public outreach meetings that are available. Now, of course, we're just looking for the Sugarloaf Project in particular. So you'll see there's all these, and if we scroll down, they're at least put in there by date. So we can go down to where we start seeing the May to June, and here's May 12th to June 16th, Sugarloaf Parkway Extension Virtual Public Meeting. You can click that View More Info, and it will take you to this page. This is the Sugarloaf Partway Extension public comment page. Now you can hit the follow button here, and it'll take you, you know, let you do the Google or YouTube follow. As you scroll down, it'll talk a little bit about the project and how to comment on it. First thing, and I'll mention this again later, at the bottom, at the bottom is the we want your feedback. This is where you can make your public comments. So when you click this link right here, it's going to pull up an online survey. You'll be able to take the survey, follow the steps through. That will give you the chance to submit the comments you want to about the project. Also on the project page, you're going to see a couple of things. You'll see why it's proposed to relieve congestion. Here's the connection. It should come from uh, where Harbin's Road crosses 316, cross country, and will tie in to I-85 between the Georgia 20 and now almost the um, Gravel Springs exit, the one they're about to uh, put online here pretty soon. The ramps are going in right now, so it'll be right in that area. That's where they're looking to connect it. Um, you can look at those things in detail here in just a second. I'll show you how to link to those. Here's the money they've spent. Fiscal year 2011, 11 million on preliminary engineering. 2014, 39 million for right of way. And now here's the long range. 195 million for construction, 6.5 million for utilities. So you're looking at 252 million and change is what they're looking at for this. Now, um, we've seen the uh, kind of broad picture here. If you'll scroll down, you'll see there's a couple of links. The ones that are probably most key to everyone is you got this right of way information. So if you own land that has not already been taken or you look like you're going to be forced to move because of this, click on that link. It's going to give you what happens if we need your facility. It's going to talk about how much money they're going to get you, how they're going to uh, judge your property, what they think it's worth, how you're going to have to go through that process. So now's the time to look in that and know. And a way that you can tell is, is this going to affect my property will be by clicking the project layout link and that's going to take you here now these are very detailed maps so if you're wanting to study them in detail I'd suggest you download them to a PDF you can download by clicking this little drop download button and then open them in usually Adobe Reader or something like that so you can look at them a little bit more closely okay here's a look I have downloaded the preliminary documents uh, that they've put in it's a very nice high detailed um, PNG type file and what you'll be able to do when you use any type of viewing er editor is hit the plus sign and you'll be able to draw in let me draw your attention first over to the legend now on the legend you're going to see it's going to talk about whoops scroll down too far there. it's going to talk about proposed pavement all this other stuff historic area wetlands buffer streams of water those are things that are important to me that I'll be looking at but if you live in the area one of the things that's going to be important to you is to look for these red dots red dots means it's a potential displacement 
That is the fancy engineering way of saying we're probably going to take your house or your land because we need to run the road through those areas. So wherever you see a red dot, it's somewhere that you want to be cautious of and know that this could force some movement. So I'll be looking for the, the shaded green, for the wetlands buffers, and for those potential displacements as I take a look at this property. So right now taking a look, this area through here is where, and I'm just going to get rid of this sidebar so we've got a little bit more screen room. This area right through here is where Sugarloaf currently ends and ties into 316. So looking across, all this is the new proposed. The road will go straight, and there'll be some ramps each way. We'll go forward, and this, of course, all right now is kind of undeveloped land. Uh, this draws my attention. You see Centennial Parkway, future road by others. Who is others? Why is that out there? I think that's a big question because there's obviously some planning happening for that as well that we should know about if it's uh, referenced on this plan. Move forward, you can see who's shown as owning these different properties and where things are at. So there's the first page. Now I'll need to go down to page two. So let's pick up here on page two. And now we've actually kind of rotated the view. And where we were just at, instead of going top to bottom, we're going to be going from the left side to the right side. So here's where that road will continue coming across. It will cross over Stanley Road, continue in this direction. There's a potential displacement. There's a potential displacement. We see the streams and waterways. We see the wetland buffers through here. It will come over and will cross US 29 and the railroad tracks right there. And then we see here's all the wetlands that have been noted in this area. And just for reference, if we scroll up just a little bit, you can see here's where the railroad continues. Here's Fence Road on this side, um, just to give you a little bit of frame of reference. Now, as we continue coming across, see there's a major interchange planned right here. So if you look, there's going to be this on-off ramp. This is directly behind Hebron Church. So for a little bit of reference in this area, these couple of properties will probably be a displacement. So they'll be coming after those two properties. Here is Hebron Church, the graveyard in front of it. The post office is just up here. And this area right through here is going to become a major area where there's going to be an interchange for this stuff to happen. As we continue to move along, we'll see that the Kula Road's right in here at the bottom. Sugarloaf will continue. There's another displacement right there. We'll continue in this direction. Moving along, we'll see that Georgia DOT has already purchased a number of these areas, as has Gwinnett County. And then we see a proposed bridge over Hurricane Shoals Road, so no interchange here, meaning that the traffic that's blocked up further up will probably come and turn and go this direction. Here's another potential displacement. Notice the wetlands buffers in these areas. They go all around. This is a lot of impervious surface that's going to be placed in, so these wetlands are going to now be asked to absorb even more water as it runs off. There's a Hebron Christian. You can see all that stuff. Um, continue moving in this direction, mostly um, no affected displacements, but a lot of open space, and you'll see there's um, going to be a lot of water that needs to be handled in wetlands. So if you are downstream, any of these streams right through here where they're indicated, uh, you're going to see a substantial increase in downstream water flow as, as this project is done. So that's that page. Let's go ahead and look at the next page and we'll be picking up kind of as it scrolls on just a little bit further, continuing to go left to right. Let's scroll back over and take a look at that. Okay, here we are continuing to come and it crosses Old Fountain Road. So this is a little bit further down. So fortunately it's not going anywhere near like the Elijah Wynn House or anything like that. But it does cross the uh, Old Fountain Road. You'll see this area right through here. Uh, more wetlands to worry about and these this area I don't think they fully included all the correct wetlands because if you look back on the original surveys this was a very low spot and there was a natural ford in the river at this area because it was wide and flat so um, something to keep an eye on there uh, no displacements right in this area but it's going to be very close behind the houses 
continuing to move in this direction. You'll see here's some water. You can see the homeowner's names for each of these places. Um, here's the part of the Appalachie. So you've got a lot of water happening in this area, plus the runoff from all the impervious surface here. There's a retention basin for runoff. So uh, right here is probably going to be a little bit of a problem spot as far as you've got a couple of ponds, retaining areas. You've got a man-made retaining pond. We're going to have some issues right there. Continuing to move along, there's a look at the wetlands in this area. And then we're going to be right here, uh, not far from where the old Sunny Hill School was, going in front of Mountain View, um, Twin R or right behind Twin Rivers, and then down by Mountain View. So uh, here's Lena Carter, and many of you have taken that going across these directions. Here's 124. So this is going to be a, a major, major issue. If you've driven through here, uh, anytime uh, everybody's over here picking up their kids after school, and so you will see that there's a huge car rider line that backs up, and now we're going to add a, an interchange on top of that. So this is, this is going to be a, a really badly congested area. Um, the, the land falls off to the right pretty steeply down through here so if if you're in this area where all these waters are at and you've got this increased impervious surface you're going to see water issues down here um, they'll be pretty heavy uh, because it's going to settle on this bottom in this area uh, look you've got a couple of um, the red dots showing that you're going to be having some forced removals continues to come along crosses over Sunny Hill Road proposed bridge Watch it when they say proposed bridge. It may be proposed. They may eventually decide just to cut the road in half and no longer give you a, a through fare. So that may be one of the things you want to bring up when you make a public comment on the process. And then let's look at kind of the last page here. And this will now flip and will be going from bottom to top to kind of close it out. So this is where it matches the previous one. And now the ramps come up. They go through the Pruitt's property and they make their way to connect to 85 right in this area. And you'll see there's Morgan Road here, are the new ramps right here for the Gravel Springs uh, interchange that will be happening. Um, one of the issues that uh, really bugs me about this part of it, you see the amount of water. This is Little Ivy Creek and Big Ivy Creek come together and move down toward the Mall of Georgia. So as we come this direction, here is the Georgia 20 exit from all Georgia. So you're going to have all that impervious surface making their way down um, Little and Big Ivy Creek, and they have their confluence right here. So they come together right at this point. Uh, this was supposed to be the, uh, the walking path that um, Georgia Wildlife Federation, this was all part of the Mall of Georgia initiative. And they said, oh, this is going to take care of it. I've run these trails for many years, and the stormwater retention is poor up here. Um, not saying illegal, I'm saying poor. It's not, it's designed within standards. I think the standards are behind uh, the times as they should be. And so the water dumps into these overflowing ponds um, and then makes this trail impassable anytime that you have around three to four inches of water in a couple of day period. Uh, you pretty much cannot pass through that walking trail. And now we're going to be dumping more water onto it. You're going to continue to see a wash. Um, there's a little branch that ties in right here that comes underneath the uh, expressway right in this area that ties in and then runs this direction to this area. Uh, and it was completely silted up and covered with all this dirt from the, uh, the top golf and the indoor karting and all that was built in this area. So you've got all that. That will come together through Ivy Creek, go right under 20 and right in this area is the original Woodward Dam and that's almost completely silted up in the back. Uh, it is still intact, and I just want to serve as a warning here that with this increased water, the increased runoff, and the amount of silt that's going to be coming down, you're probably going to see a dam failure. Okay, so there's a quick overview. I hope you saw how to get to it. Remember, the way to get the public comments is to take that little survey form that was linked. I'll have that link below. Make sure you get on there and you get your opinion on it so that they get the full picture. Um, until next time we get to talk, I'm Eli Stanson, Good night, Rambler.